Hello everyone, this is Alicia Zari, Sunnyvale Math Tosa, and today in this video we are going to talk about clothesline math. What is it? How do you use it? And why would you use it to support your students in building number sense? In this video we're going to start with whole numbers, then move to fractions, and finally end with some tips and reasons why to use. So clothesline math is pretty simple. All you need clothesline. I choose to use a double clothesline so that I can show equivalents um, or multiple representations and some cards. I have these printed out already but you can use simple things like index cards and make them at recess right before your math block. Um, the purpose is to really practice the scale of number and knowing where numbers are placed in relation to each other. Um, there's a lot of research on more or less um, and showing a number's value. So to get started, I usually like to start with zero or one, no matter what type of numbers I'm using. And so I'll hand it to a student, um, usually the student that maybe is not as confident in class, I'll give them the first one because there's no right or wrong answers. And then I'll give another student, maybe someone who um, has been identified on MTSS and I wanna have them participate in the classroom and build um, the classroom community, I might give them the next one because again, it's low stakes, easy entry points. And so they'll come up to the board, we'll be at the carpet and they'll say, okay, is one more or less than zero? Oh, it's more. Great. What if they put it over here? Great. They put it over here. Great. It's fine because we don't have enough reference points. But let's say a student put it there, and then the next student wants to put two. This one's a little bit more tricky. Yes, two is more than one, but now we're getting into scale. So students are gonna notice spacing. And so this is where the class comes in. Usually the class participates, so it's not just the person coming up to the front. They'll give a symbol, like it's in the right spot, go a little bit that direction, go a little bit this direction. So the student's up here and the class is going, no, keep going, keep going, keep going, and stop. Okay, now we've got it. But I may come in and I may change it on them. I may come in and say, what's this number? With a five and a three, that makes eight. I may say that eight goes over here. So now we need to change because our scale doesn't match. So I may bring this from zero to eight. If my scale is from zero to eight, now I'm asking students, what would our halfway point be? This is getting them into fractional thinking before ever um, even teaching fractions. One half of eight is four. I may have a card for four, I may not. And so that means our one and two are probably gonna end up over here. I may change it on them and say, actually our scale is from one to 50. If it's from one to 50, these are probably gonna be pretty close. Where would three tens go? Where would three tens go? I'd have them stop and think. I would have them um, turn to a partner, pair share. Well, what would the halfway point be? Well, half of 50, 50 divided by two is 25. Well, is three tens more or less than 25? It's more, so it's gonna be more than the halfway point. Hmm, we talked about different representations. What does this represent? It also represents three tens. So in a double number line, I would just put it right below. So that's how I would use um, the clothesline map with whole numbers. In the upper grades, third, fourth, and fifth, you're really gonna use this a lot with fractions. So I'm gonna go back to my zero, one, and two. I'll probably start with zero, and then I'll ask someone to put one on the board. Typically students in the upper grades, before you've done any fraction work, they'll put one right here. But in our case, I may say, our scale is actually from zero to one. And then I go, pick a number that falls in between zero and one. Low floor, high ceiling. Someone might say a half, 
someone might say a fourth, but you might have students that might try to stretch it and say 327 thousandths, um, testing their fractional or um, decimal knowledge. And so then I hand it to the students. Okay, there's a great benchmark here. Where would this one go? Okay, it's the halfway point. And again, I may change it on them partway through. What if I change my scale, not from zero to one, but from, from zero to two? Now, is the half in the right spot? Someone come on up and um, fix where the half would go in this number line from zero to two. And again, the class is going, no, it needs to go that way. Why? Because one is the halfway point. So they're pointing, they're pointing, they're all participating. It's hard to tell when you're up here exactly the scale. So the class really gets to be the perspective because they can see it better than the person at the board. You might also notice that there are, again, different representations. You might also have ones where students fill in and color how many, and they have to decide how much. Would I do this all in one day? Not at all. I would start with something basic. Probably start with just the whole numbers and getting them practicing with being precise, attending to precision, talking about more or less, introducing vocabulary like greater than or less than. I might say what is in between. I might say what is the midpoint or the what would be halfway. And all of those are building up to um, working with the numbers that we need for class. So again, you're choosing the numbers based on um, what you're seeing in your student work, um, which numbers they need practice with, uh, the type of addition and subtraction problems you might be using um, in class. But clothesline math is a wonderful way to build number sets in a very low stakes way. A quick tip that you might wanna know is if you have a magnetic whiteboard, I like to use these little clips. <clears throat> I'll tie it onto my clothesline and that way when I don't need my clothesline for the day, I'll just move it over to the side of my board and when I need my clothesline, I pull it out for the day. So it's on the ready. Same thing, I also check out the website for clothesline math that's linked below because you'll see that there are a lot of clothesline cards already made. These ones are from Kristen Acosta. She has a lot of um, color copies. These are coins. Um, there are fractions, there's decimals, there's dot talks, um, different representations. So we can see what is equivalent. Um, but at the end of the day, a little piece of paper, index card, write it. You can have students create. What would be a fraction that would be more than halfway, but less than this? and you can give them a card and they come place it on. So this is Clothesline Math, a wonderful math talk and number sense routine. It takes five to 10 minutes um, every day, but it has a lot of bang for your buck with student sense making. Thank you. Wow, thanks for sticking around. Hopefully by now you're bought in on why we should use Clothesline Math, but did you know that it's also recommended for students struggling with mathematics, according to this guide published in March 2021 around intervention, we can see in number four, the use of number line to facilitate learning of mathematical concepts and procedures to build understanding of grade level material, shows strong evidence as a intervention practice. What you'll notice is one, students don't come in with a lot of number line knowledge. And two, when they do, you might get them started zero through five, but then they make mistakes like this, imprecise spacing, um, not attending to precision. Also, and especially when we see with fractions, students will mix up the difference between dashes and the spaces between and how much that is valued, which is why showing a lot of representations 
um, having fraction bars, having manipulatives, Cuisinaire rods, um, in addition to our number lines, is also really important to build sense making. A common um, skill that students may need to know for current grade level and more advanced mathematics is understanding the midpoint. What's halfway? When we change things from 0 to 5, 0 to 10, 0 to 100, seeing what the halfway point is a really important skill. And finally, when you see worksheets like this, it looks like students are using number lines, it looks like students are um, building sense, sense making, but they could be really successful just by counting, not really understanding any fractions. So to recap, um, we use closed line math to help build precision, to help practice that midpoint, to build language around more than, less than, greater than, less than, um, and ultimately, when students can see this as a tool that they understand, they're empowered to use it to show their work. This is a common strategy you'll see for addition and subtraction, using what we call an open number line, either counting up or counting back. Um, it helps with students when they don't know the standard algorithm, but they can make jumps to get there. So if you're interested in learning more, please check out the Sunnyvale School District Curriculum and Instruction website. We have more information about closed line math, as well as a bunch of PDFs that you can print out ready to go. Um, good luck getting started and enjoy.